Hello and welcome to another Canvas tutorial. In this video, I'll share with you some tips and tricks to help you understand how pages and modules work and get you thinking about how you might choose to link your buttons on your home page or might get you thinking about whether you need to have certain buttons at all. So I'm on my home page and as I hover over my main subject buttons, you can see that none of them go anywhere. So I'm gonna have to make some decisions about where I want them to go and what I want them to look like. So one possibility that I've shared with teachers is to have those buttons linked to a page within a module. Let's take a quick look at what that could look like. I'm gonna click on the side into module view and you can decide whether you want the module button available in navigation to kids or if you want it hidden. You can see mine is available because it doesn't have the little eyeball next to it. So I'll click on module view and you can see within my modules, I have a module for each uh, subject that I teach. Now a module does not have to be a subject. A module could be for a book group. A module could be simply for a word study progression through the course of a week. Um, it could be any way that you would choose to package work that students might do or a lesson that students might move through. But for this purpose, um, I have them linked like this. Um, I created a module with a page as a landing page. And how I did that was I clicked the plus button over here. And instead of click assignment, I clicked to add a page. But I'll exit right out of that and cancel. So, So let's jump back to my home page and take a look at how I could choose to link those buttons. So we'll pick the math button to start. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select that math button and I'm going to go up to my link. You can also do insert. I like to use the little link icon. <clears throat> Click the down arrow and instead of an external link, I'm going to choose a course link. And you will get a pop up on the side that asks you where in your Canvas course do you want to go to. So I could say I want that to go to my math landing page. Now you can see I've got a lot of pages. I'm in my sandbox. Of course, you're working in your homeroom course. I have a lot of pages to sift through. Luckily, Canvas has a good search option. So I know I want to look for something named math. So naming things is pretty important. And it happens to be math links. You can see that one is published. I honestly don't know what those two are, but we're going to click math links. It glows a little bit yellow so you know that it's published and I can scroll down and click save. So now if it's published and I did, if students, if I hover over it, I can see it's an active link. I click on it and it's going to take students right to that landing page where I could have a link to workplaces or I could lay out the live links that could go to workplaces or other places that I want students to go in math. Let's go back home again and let's take a look at another option. Let's say I may be working with olders and I want to teach them to navigate in modules. I'm going to pick on social studies right here. I'll click edit again and this time I'm going to click my social studies button, go up to the link again and do course links, but this time I'm going to choose modules. Whoops, I did not want that. Remove link. And I'm still on pages, so let's go back to modules. And you can see I can link a button to an assignment if I want to make an ease of access. I can pretty much link a button to anything. I would like it to do a quiz, a discussion board, um, going back to course navigation. I could make a button that goes directly back home. So that can be handy for your littles. But let's do a module. We'll open it up. And I have these modules color uh, coordinated so that if you would have littles accessing modules, you can refer to the color as well as the word. You can make the colors coordinate with your buttons as well if you're thinking ahead. I'm going to click on Social Studies. And now I've linked to a module, not to a page. Let's scroll down and save, and let's take a look at what that looks like. Now you'll see when I click on Social Studies, this is going to take me to this module view, which can kind of be a daunting view for your littles, but certainly with emojis or colors, they could be taught to read this. But then the, the I wouldn't really want to just take them to a page from module view. I might use this if I'm going to have a bunch of 
links that I want students to access, but I really don't want to create a fancy page. So let's say I want to do that. From my module view, I can click add and I can click add an external URL. And let's say maybe my students are studying Martin Luther King Jr. And I just wanna post safe links for them to research. And I've placed a few of them up here. Um, so I like them, um, I like the Duxters site. That's a nice, uh, safe and kid-friendly site. So we'll grab that URL right there and we'll go back to my page and we'll paste it. It uh, likes you to add a page name to it. So I might just say, Duxters, and then you can decide if you want it to load in a new tab or if you want it to display right within Canvas. Um, there's benefits to both. Even if you have it stay right in Canvas, they can still load it in a new tab right from there. Indenting just makes it look pretty. We'll click Add Item so you can see how that looks like. Now I'm going to publish it. So now I've got a couple um, active, I have an active link under there and I have a page under there. So students could come to this module and see that they're going to research Duxters. And I'll just add one more, or they're going to research Martin Luther King on Duxters. I'll just add another link. I think I have a some Martin Luther King Jr. quotes. So we'll grab that link right there. We'll go back to the add item, paste that link. Um, We'll just call that quotes and I won't indent. We'll just keep it in the same tab for now. Click add item. Now I'm still within that social studies modules, but maybe I want to label that a little more carefully. So I can also add what's called a text header. If you're going to have your kids navigate and look at this module page, let's add text headers to separate their information. So they're gonna read and be able to figure out what's what. Luther King Jr. Research. Um, doesn't matter really if I indent or not. Add item. And I'm actually going to slide this up. So that becomes like a heading. So I'm in social studies, but now here's all their Martin Luther King Jr. Research. And I've got everything published. So now if kids are accessing through module view, this is what they would see. If I click on social studies links or anywhere within that module, you're going to see that next button here. So if I click next, it's going to take me to that Duxter's link. Oh, and I do not know why I have a frowny face there. I'm not going to explore that. Let's see if I can open it in another tab. So there's always a solution. We'll go back to Canvas. I click next and that's going to take me to my next link. You can see it didn't show the text header. I I'm not sure why. So that appears to not want to load in here. So I'm just going to open that in a new tab. We'll exit right out of there. So just one more thing about modules while I'm here. Like I said, you can add just about anything to your modules. So let's say maybe you want to add an assignment to that module. I can start right within my module view, click the plus button, and it's automatically saying I want an assignment. Um, maybe I already created one, but let's say I didn't, so I can click create assignment and I can choose to indent or not indent. And you can see that it's not really giving me a lot of options yet. When I create within module view, I'm just going to click add item. It's going to place it right at the bottom. Keep in mind, I can slide that up if I wanted it to be somewhere else. I can actually, I can move it to another module too. It's real easy to slide things around. Um, let's get it back up here so I can use that eight dot matrix right there to slide it around. Martin doesn't want to go up there. Let's try it again. There we go. Now, if I want to edit that assignment, I actually need to click on it and then I'm going to get within the assignment edit view by clicking the editing pencil. So there's nothing there yet. I just created a shell for the assignment. And then within that, within that assignment or assessment, I can type all my directions here. I can insert, um, uh, recorded media. So if I want to talk and explain, oh, not a recorded one. Sorry, let's cancel out of it. I want to click the record button and I can record myself. There I am in my living room and I can start recording and say three, two, one. Use a text box or create a video or an audio explaining what you learned about Martin Luther King Jr. I'll click finish and save that media. 
so I can have myself within my directions if I want. But then if I scroll down, and I can, I can make those directions as pretty as we want to. Remember, with parents as an audience, you want to give them a little bit more to see so you know what students are, they know what students are being asked to do. I'm going to pick either one or four points, depending on how I want to score it. Now I can add it to that assignment group of social studies. Keep in mind, students will not see assignment groups. They will see current and past assignments, but not groups. We want to go complete or incomplete and do not count towards the final grade. Now on my submission type, I'm going to go for an online submission and here's where I can give students a choice. So I can say uh, you can do a text entry or you can do a media recording or maybe I'm just going to say you can do a word map of a Google drawing and you can upload your file. So you can have lots of different ways to show what you learned within this one assignment. If I set a date, it will show up within the student's to-do list. If I set a due date, so we'll just set a pretend due date right there. And if you only want it to, to be available until a certain time that students can't access it anymore, you can set it here. You can schedule by setting a start date. Um, but let's just save and publish that assignment. When it's published, we can actually look at it in student view to see what it would look like. So I will click on that student view and let's take a look. You can see I didn't put a lot of thought into my directions telling them what to do, but I did make a video recording. And then when they click start assignment, they're going to see all these different choices. Now keep in mind, I chose three different things. I chose file upload. There's where they can upload a file. I chose a text entry and I chose media recorder. That's a lot if you're talking about littles, but for your older kids, they have an option that they can, they can upload or they can pull right from their Google drive. If they have created something now, I can't use this tool when I'm pretending to be a student, but this gives them lots of options um, to submit their assignment. Let's leave that student view. And I think I'll end this tutorial by going back into modules so you can take a look how that assignment just lays out so they could do their research 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 and then their assignment is there they could also access it by clicking on assignments if you have that button live they could click on it over there and you're going to see a whole lot of assignments in mind because i'm in my sandbox and it's going to be organized a little bit differently. Hopefully that clears up a little bit about page view and module view and gets you thinking about how you might decide to link your buttons when you're ready. Hit me up with any questions you might have and have a great day.